Hey, what's up everyone? Good morning, or I should say good afternoon. It's like 12, what are we at? 12.30 on a Saturday. It's a beautiful day, a little overcast, but not bad. I'm out for a cruise, testing a couple different things. One is this throttle lock right here, which we'll get into. It's, it's just one of those inexpensive throttle locks. I got it from my buddy, Scott, who he also rides. He's got a Hornet and a Shadow, and he bought it on Amazon. I want to say it was 12 bucks for the pair because he bought the pair since he has two bikes where they were 12 bucks each I forget what it was but it was pretty cheap so anyway we were out to lunch the other day we met up and he gave me one or lent me one I should say and said here check this out see if you like it so I installed it I am testing it today I tried it a little yesterday on the commute home from work but it was just too much traffic to really get it so I'm taking a ride out today a little bit out east to get to some open roads. Right now I'm just on these nice little windy roads, whiskey road, and heading out and we'll test this out. So let's wait till we get to an open road where I can actually test the throttle lock and we'll see how this how this bad boy works, if it's yay or nay. Alright. Those are awesome mountain bike trails right there. We used to ride those all the time. Uh, what else we got going on? We got a GPS. This is not a motorcycle GPS, this is just your cheap. $99 Garmin. This is the uh, Drive 52 that I picked up, uh, which kills me because I have, I, I know I've got three GPSs floating around my house somewhere. I haven't used them in years because I use the phone in the car, but I can't find them, of course. So I ended up going out and buying another one. I didn't want to buy a oh, nice car. I didn't want to go out and buy a new uh, a motorcycle GPS because they're like three, $400. So I'm just testing this out. This is regular car GPS. I have it hooked up through um, USB. And, uh, you know, I'll discuss later in the video why I'm choosing this route instead of using the phone. I know most people use the phones, but uh, I'm using the GPS. So we'll, we'll discuss why I chose that over the phone. So, all right, let's get to some open roads. All right, so here we are on William Floyd Parkway. Nice open road. No traffic, no lights. Gonna get this guy up to sixth gear. And then we'll set this. All right, so to set it, you have to adjust this screw first for the friction. And now we're just gonna push this forward and it's gonna lock on the brake handle. So we're holding at 61, we're going a little downhill right now, I'm just going to keep my hand on the bars, not using the throttle as you can see, we're holding the 61, 59, well it is holding, I'm just like keeping my hands on the bars here, it is actually nice not having to hold the throttle. And when you're ready to release, you just push forward and the friction will automatically uh, you know, adjust and go back to your know, regular position. Yeah, I did notice you know, when I was trying around with it last night, I did have to adjust this screw right here, which that's to adjust the friction. And it was, you gotta kinda get it just right because if it's not, if you don't have enough friction on it, it's gonna, oh, it's still going. Uh, if you don't have enough friction on it, it's gonna slowly turn back, as you can see. It's starting to do it, we're down to 51, 50. I don't know how many cars want me, 49. You can see it's losing a little bit of friction. So, I'm gonna throttle it up again, move it up. But if you have too much friction where it holds, then it's kinda hard to get in position as you're because you know, you're pushing up here to get it in position. So watch, now I'm gonna unthrottle and see it goes back fine. So now we're back in regular mode. But I find if there's too much friction, as you're pushing this up, your throttle's going like this and you're going like this because it's too much friction. You're actually uh, releasing the throttle. So we're gonna try it on some more open roads because I don't have, that's not much of a test. You know, maybe like a mile worth of a test and I was kind of fooling around with it. So we're gonna hit some more open roads and we'll test it again. So let's uh, kill the cam till we get back to there. 
Shouldn't be too much traffic, so I'm gonna set it. Let's see, I'm gonna roll it and set. All right, 46, 47, I'm gonna back off a little bit. So, as you can see, it's definitely holding. But how long, I don't know. But yeah, you're not really gonna wanna ride without, you know, with one hand that long anyway. Like right now my hand is on the bars and I'm not even touching the throttle. So actually it is a little more relaxing because you don't have that, you know, wrist pressure pushing down. And I know they have those, those other, those, I forget what they call, but they come out here and your wrist could rest on them to help with the throttle. I know a lot of people use those that help out. Um, you know, this seems to be doing what it's supposed to be doing. It's not 100% perfect, but for 12 bucks for the set, and I'll leave a link in the description, and I'm pretty sure that's what Scott paid for them. I think 12 bucks for a pair or two of them. Now, I don't think he's getting this one back. <laughs> nah, I'll, I'll buy my own. Um, are they worth it? Ah, uh, yeah. I mean, I wouldn't say it's a gimmick and they don't work. I wouldn't say it's 100%. I know you get those ones that are a lot more expensive that I'm sure will do a much better job. But if you're just looking for, you know, you want to give your hand a rest, you could shake out, you know, your hand or something. These, here we go, roll off. There we go, and now we're back to, back to normal. All right, so that's pretty much the throttle lock in a nutshell. I mean, it's it's inexpensive, it, it works. I'll, you know, actually I'll set it again while we, while we talk some more. We go up to, Keep it in fourth. I got nobody behind me. All right, so I'm gonna keep it in fourth. We got the throttle lock going. Um, yeah, like I said, I'll put the link in the description, and we'll we'll leave it as that. You know, I think for 12 bucks you can't go wrong. You know, something you ain't gonna keep in your saddlebag, in your jacket pocket. You know, it's small, it's light. It's uh, I'm guessing it's aluminum. Feels like it's aluminum. I'm gonna pick up some more speed here. Uh, and it works pretty good. So, all right, let's move on to the next GPS. Why don't? Why am I not using a phone for GPS? Uh, all right, my reasons. Well, my experience so far, having the phone. First of all, I'm not 100% uh, confident in keeping the phone on the on the bike. Uh, I know it's not going to fall off. This a ram mount. Actually, works great. Uh, my thing is. God forbid I get into an accident and I get thrown from the bike, or the phone gets thrown from the mount. I don't have my phone on me if I'm, you know, alone. I need to make a phone call. Eh, chances are it's really not going to happen. I live on Long Island. There's always a car passing by. What, what happened? Whatever. But it'd be nice to keep my phone uh, on my purse. The other thing is, uh, you know, I know a lot of people have issues with the cameras, with the phones, the vibrations mess up the autofocusing on the cameras. I haven't had that happen yet. I don't know if it's gonna happen, but I also don't wanna have to buy a new phone because the, you know, the camera went bad. So those are two reasons. The other reason is functionality. I, I like having a GPS that's on all the time on GPS. You know, the phone is multifunction. It does does a lot of things. There's times where I've got the, the maps going and I'll get a phone call and now the screen switches and it won't switch back to the map. Now I gotta scroll and you know get back to the map. Or same thing, I'm listening to music, I wanna change the track. I gotta scroll and you know go in between the, the different screens. Uh, it, well, that's really not a valid point because if I'm doing it this way, the phone's gonna be in my pocket, so I'm not even gonna be able to do that anyway, like it is right now, it's sitting in my pocket. But uh, the fact is the screen isn't 100% reliable when it's using the phone as a GPS because a lot of times it'll just switch to another screen for something else that comes in, a text or whatever, and it doesn't always go back to the maps. And then sometimes the phone, uh, the, the screen blanks out and they gotta wake it up. And what happens when you wake it up? You can't use Face ID, you got a helmet on. You gotta type in the code, you know, wake it up, up, then scroll back to the map. It's, and then there's times it just goes to sleep on me when it's not supposed to, because I have the setting to, you know, never sleep when powered on and on maps. So it's not 100% reliable. I just like having a GPS 100% on, you know, as soon as I'm on the bike, it's on GPS and I always have the map right there. If I need to go home, hit the home button. Uh, it's not as practical as a phone, or I should say not as easy to use as a phone as far as putting in the addresses. 
Uh, I've got the cheap $99 model, so you got to type in the address. You know, phone is nice. You can just speak into the phone, or if you got your helmet, use the Bluetooth helmet to speak into the phone and say the address. So yeah, you are giving up a little bit of you know convenience. Plus, updating you always have to update the the map. Uh, which really that isn't that much. You have to update it, but you know they're not going to stay as up to date as the phone. The other thing is I like having a reliable GPS signal. There's times I'm up on the North Shore and I have no jump gravel here and I have no signal. And I know you can use Google has the offline maps that you can download and I have used that, but I found that not to be reliable because although the map is available, uh, instructions aren't. If I need to go somewhere, nice illegal U-turn, jerk. You know, if you need to go somewhere, it can't give you directions because you've got no cellular connection. You have the maps that you can view, which is good, but... Uh, so that's why I'm going with this. I may eventually upgrade to an actual motorcycle GPS, but so far I could do what I want to do with this. I can even download rats, routes. I don't know why the guy waved to me, maybe because I'm talking and I have my hand in the air. But you could download uh, your routes to it. You can make your routes on, on Basecamp and, and put them here. You can, you know, there's people that share their routes online and you can import them. So it does actually everything I wanted to do and it's a dedicated unit and it's GPS all the time. I don't have to worry about not having a signal. And I like having the phone secure right here in my pocket. So that's my reasonings, you know, everyone's got what works for them, I'm not saying this is the right way or the wrong way, this for me works. You know, let me know what you guys think, you know, put your comments down below, let me know, you know what you do to ride, what you like, what you don't like, you know, I'm interested to find out. I know, especially with smartphones these days, you know, standalone GPS's are kind of, you know, <laughs> almost extinct at this point. But yeah, my son laughed at me when I bought this, Dad, why are you buying a GPS, you got a phone, ah, whatever. So, all right, guys, thanks for tuning in. If you like the video, if you like the channel, hit like, hit subscribe. Uh, appreciate it. And, you know, comments below, links will be in the description. Thanks again. Have an awesome day.